Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the reading assessment for Functional Skills English. Now specifically this is going to be aimed towards anyone doing level 1 or level 2 functional skills. However, if you're an ESOL student or if you're even a GCSE student, then we're still going to be going over a lot of the skills that are going to be important for your course. I'd like to remind you again if you could try and like and subscribe, it really does help us out when you do so. And it helps us to really zone in on the kind of things that you need to help you progress in your course and what we can do in the future. Look at the images below and think about the questions that follow. So you can see there we've got three images. We've got one with the actual um, book and some sunglasses, some money and a gavel, which is normally used for law. So use the images to predict the focus of today's video. Super challenge. What controversy or what debate might there be surrounding this topic? And the final one, what key skills are needed to pass the functional skills reading assessment? Now, typically this is going to be one of the first assessments that you do. So it's really important that you have a good grasp of the kind of skills and things that you need to do in order to be successful for this assessment. Class feedback, check your ideas against the ones below. So the topic that we're going to be looking at in this video then specifically is going to focus on the theme of holidays. Also, we're thinking about taking children out of school during term time. Now, this might be quite a controversial topic because holidays are very expensive. And if you are a parent, you'll know all about how expensive it can be to take your children um, away during the summer months where they're typically quite more expensive as opposed to taking them out during term time when they're at school. However, if you do that, there's a chance of getting fined or even having legal action taken against you if you take them out during term time. So the final one then, in order to pass the reading assessment, you need to be able to select and interpret information. So this is going to be really important because you could be faced with three different reading texts. You're going to have a very limited amount of time to read them, comprehend them and select key bits of information. In order to pass this exam and to do well in this assessment, you need to be able to skim and scan multiple texts. That means to read them very quickly and actually absorb the information and use information to make an informed decision. And the final one there, and that bullet point really covers the higher value questions as well for the reading assessment. So first of all then, what is skimming and scanning? So as I just said, it's gonna be a really integral skill that you need in order to pass this assessment. So skimming, skimming is reading rapidly in order to get a general overview of the material. So you're not reading it in depth. You're not trying to memorize it for days, weeks or months uh, ahead in the future. It's just to quickly be able to read through it very quickly and to get an understanding of what the text is about. Scanning is reading rapidly in order to find specific facts. So for example, if you had a question that said something like, um, in 2018, how many people were fined for taking their children away on holiday? You'd be able to quickly go through the text, scan the information and be able to find the specific information needed to answer the question. Now, what I'd like to do, I'd like you to have a go at the stretch and challenge task and read the reading assessment overview and attempt the challenges that follow. So here we have the reading assessment overview. And we're going to have a few questions as well. Now, if you'd like to access this, what you need to do is you need to click on the link below and you can have the full extent of this. You can read it in your own time or even come back at it and view it at points in the academic year, especially if you're going to come up and do your assessment soon. It'll be a really good resource to keep hold of. But we will also go through it together in the video. So when you look through it, you need to use skimming and scanning to understand the reading assessment and a super challenge and to five comprehension questions to test your skills. So it's all thinking about this idea of using skimming and scanning in order to be successful in your reading response. Read the extract and be ready to respond to the questions that follow. So here we have our overview then of the reading assessment. So first of all, it says then starting your course. When starting out on a functional skills course, the first component your teacher is likely to assess you on is the reading element. This is because the skills needed to pass this section of the course deals with comprehension, a key skill needed in everyday life. Focusing on a theme. 
Each assessment you sit will have a specific theme. In the assessment, you'll be faced with three different texts if studying level one and level two, and only one text if you're on an entry level course. When looking at the three different texts, it's important that you understand the presentational or organizational features used to lay out each text. These may be things like headlines, subheadings, bullet points, and paragraphs. These will be key to helping you identify specific information within each text. Although each text will be focusing on the same theme, their viewpoints and ideas may differ to each other. For higher value questions, you will need to understand the key differences and similarities. So if you need to pause the video now and to read it through it in more detail, please feel free to do so. Again, a link to the actual full document for this will be available in the description as well. Quick fire questions. Answer the questions below to show your understanding. Number one. Which component a teacher is likely to test you on first? Number two, look at the line. When looking at the three different texts, it's important that you understand the presentational or organisational features you set out each text. Under which subheading can this be found? Number three, on the level two course, how many texts will you need to read during the assessment? Number four, identify one reason why you will be tested on the reading element first. And number five, final one, in order to pass the higher level questions, what do you need to be able to identify from each of the three different texts? If you'd like to pause the video here and go through it at your own time, please feel free to do so. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump ahead and we're going to go through the answers in the next part of the video. Class feedback. Check your answers against the ones below. The first component to be assessed on will be the reading element. Number two, it can be found under the subheading focusing on a theme. Number three, for level two, you will be faced with three texts. Again, these will all be on a, same, a similar theme However, their viewpoints will differ ever so slightly. Number four, because it is a key skill needed in everyday life, so that's why we're going to do the reading assessment first. And number five, in order to pass the higher level questions, you need to be able to understand the key differences and similarities between the three texts. Now, it might be that you've already had a go at practicing a reading assessment before. If that is the case, then that's fantastic. But you'll notice as you go further on in the assessment that some of the questions will get higher in value and that will ask you to do things like comparing what you've read in text A, text B and text C. So because it's a higher value um, question, it would require you to write in a more in-depth response. In your reading assessment, you'll come across a variety of different texts. So these are going to be things like this. So you'll have an article blogs, emails, letters, reports, a speech, a review, and generally those are going to be the main types of text that you're going to have to come across. Now, something to be aware of is that when a lot of people come to their assessments, um, they do kind of find that they favour certain forms of writing more than others. A good habit to get into is just to make sure that you feel confident and comfortable about each form of writing if you're not too sure about these, then please do check out some of our other videos that do go into these in a bit more detail. What I'd like to think about now, before we move on, is just to think about how confident do you feel about each form of writing? Are you able to interpret them quite well? And do you understand the actual purpose and the form that these are laid out in? Reading assessment. Using everything you have learned, attempt the reading assessment. In order to pass the assessment, you need to be able to do the following things. So the first one, one of the most important ones for me, is manage your time effectively. Think about how long you actually get for the actual reading assessment. It will say so on the front of your exam paper. So make sure that you read it very carefully before you start your assessment. Read the extracts closely. Again, skimming and scanning is a fantastic tool to use, but don't rush yourself, okay? Make sure you're using those skills 
in an appropriate manner, especially when it comes to answering the questions as well. Complete mock assessments. Now there are many different mock assessments available online. Obviously we're going through one now and there'll be more available via this channel as well. Read non-fiction. So a lot of people expect to pass functional skills, but they never really take the time to do things like read newspapers, articles or blogs, all of which are quite easily accessible if you have the internet or a mobile phone or anything like that. Now this will really help to build and improve your understanding of English. And if you're not doing that, then it means it's going to seriously impact your understanding of actual English text. Now what we're about to look at is a reading assessment or at least a short version of the reading assessment. If you'd like to do the more in-depth version, then the example will be available in the link below. Okay. Read the extract below to help ready yourself for the reading assessment. So it says then, in 2022, there was a record number of parents being forced to pay the price for taking their children out of school in order to grab a cheap breakaway without having to pay the extortionate prices they would face during the peak seasons. 450 fines have been issued to parents living in Coventry for unauthorised absences at the cost of £120 with each infraction. The City Council has stated that it is a necessary measure in order to help support schools and improve their absence figures. The statistics surrounding school absences may be shocking, however the Council say it is all part of a new initiative to clamp down on parents that think it is okay to take their young children out of school during key months within the academic calendar. Instead of increasing fines, the council aims to provide parents with more information and guidance and improve their understanding as to why it is so important that students remain in school. So if you'd like to pause the video here and go through at your own leisure, please feel free to do so. I'll also remind you as well that the full example for this assessment, so including the full three texts as well, will be available in the link as well. So if you want to actually stretch yourself and have a go at the full proper mock assessment, then please feel free to do so. What we're going to do now in this video is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to have a look at the five questions based on this extract. Quick five questions. Answer the questions below to assess your reading skills. Number one, look at text A. What is the main reason for parents taking their children out of school during term time. Number two, how much money could parents be fined? Number three, how does the council plan on improving attendance for schools? Number four, what de forest technique has been used in a line 450 fines have been issued? Now, if you're not too sure what we mean when we talk about de forest techniques, that is a really integral part of the actual functional skills course that you need to be aware of. So De Forest actually covers an acronym that goes through some of the language techniques that you need to know. If you're not too sure about them, please do check out our other videos that go into them in a bit more detail. Number five, final one. Look at the line of a new initiative to clamp down on parents that think it is okay to take their young children out of school during key months. What is meant by the term clamp down? Now, all of these questions that we've just looked at would be quite low value. Typically, in the reading assessment, they would be worth around one mark each. So if you do want to stretch and challenge yourself, please do download the full reading assessment that's provided in the description. Class feedback. Check your answers against the ones below. So for number one, then, parents take their children out of school to save money on their holidays. Number two, so the total amount of money they could be fined is £120 for each infraction, which means, of course, that um, if they have multiple children they're taking out, for example, it'll be £120 each, or each time they do it, it'll be £120. Number three, in order to actually address this issue, the council intend to provide parents with more information and guidance. Number four, the technique that was actually used in the quotation was a statistic. So any time that we're using any numerical data to justify or prove a point, generally it's going to be a statistic. And number five, last one, answers may include but are not limited to, to restrict them 
to prevent them from doing something or to control them. And of course, what we're talking about there is that phrase to clamp down on them. So as I said earlier on in the video, it's really important that you spend some time and you read some articles and some blogs and some newspapers because it's certain phrases like this that we don't use necessarily in everyday conversation that could throw you off in the reading assessment. So it's really important that you get to grips with as many of these English phrases or idioms they get thrown about a lot of the time in articles or in actual written text as well. Now if you'd like to stretch and challenge yourself and have a go at a writing assessment, what you can do is you can use some of the information that we've looked through today and apply some of that understanding to your own writing assessment. So if you look at the typical question, this is what it should look like when you actually go on and you move on to doing your writing assessment. So it says then, your friend or relative is thinking about taking their children out of school during term time, but are worried they will get in trouble. Write them an email advising them on what to consider. In your email you should discuss the pros and cons of taking their children on holiday during term time, have an appropriate tone to give them advice, use a range of deforest techniques to help support your writing, and have high quality spelling, punctuation and grammar. Now, when you are faced with a question like this, it's important to consider these few questions. The first thing I'd recommend you to think about is to identify the TAP of the exam question. If you're not too sure what we mean by this, TAP essentially means the topic, the audience and the purpose. So whenever you get a question like this, it's important to underline or highlight the key areas they want you to focus on. Super challenge. Think about what kind of tone would you need to use for the audience. So again, if you actually have a look at the question, it says that you're going to give some advice. So what kind of tone would that be? We're also told that it's going to be talking to um, a friend or a relative. So think about the kind of way that you might speak to them. And the mega challenge. Use everything you have learned in the reading assessment to plan and write your response for the writing question. Now, you're not necessarily going to need all the information that we went through in the reading assessment, but you should be able to use your own ideas and your own understanding about the topic to make an informed decision and write some piece of advice to your friend or your relative. If you'd like to actually see this um, question played out a bit longer with an actual example, please do check out our next video that will be uploaded next week that actually goes into the writing section for it in more detail. If you need any additional support or help, the new videos will be added onto our channel every single week. Alternatively, please like and subscribe, leave us a comment and we'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. If you're looking on this channel and you still can't find something to help you out for a specific need, then please do check out our partner channel, Bookworm Teaching, for more lessons and guidance on all things English. Thanks ever so much for listening guys, please do subscribe, it really helps out our channel when you do so. If you need anything, please feel free to leave us a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for listening and all the best with all your work in the future. Bye bye.